Hello, Shaker Heights Varsity baseball fans, and welcome in once again to Southern California, where your Red Raiders are taking on Durango and the Trailblazers. They are one and one. So is Shaker. We'll tell you all about it. But firstly, we're going to tell you about Tyler Zach warming up right behind me here, catching the balls and strikes from him. Quinton Garnett. He's been getting the start multiple times. This is his second time. Braden White got the start yesterday. Quinton Garnett has been in every single game so far. He was in third yesterday. Even though he's not in the catching position all the time, he's always out there. He's made an impact as well. He's once again number two in the batting order. But for Tyler Zach throwing those balls and strikes, he faced off against Francis Parker. He was only able to get two outs in his inning pitched. He gave up three earned runs on two hits and three walks. However, today is a new day against a new team. This school, Durango, is from Nevada, so it's going to be a very different look than what Shaker is used to back home over 2,400 miles away in Shaker Heights, Ohio. For the defensive makeup, your Red Raiders, of course, they have Tyler Zach on the mound, catching the balls and strikes. Will be Quinton Garnett going from first to third. It's going to be Casey Robinson, O'Shea Howard at second. Shortstop is going to be occupied by the freshman Aaron Neiman. He's actually leading off in the batting order. Over at third, we have Andrew Burley getting his very first varsity start. Out in left in the outfield, we're going to be seeing Colin Richard. In center, of course, Will Tagan. And in right, it's number 13, Nemo Crosby getting the start as well. So Shaker coming off that win against Francis Parker. They won that 7-5, to almost gave up a big 7-1 to lead. Then they lost yesterday to Morse. 8 nothing was your score there. Andrew Fogarty getting the start. He had a great showing until that sixth inning where he gave up six. But here we go. The first batter is up. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here with the call from San Diego, California. Tyler Zach, the first pitch means everything. How will the momentum start off? in this start in San Diego. The first pitch cut on down the middle and through to shallow center field, and that's one way to start you off if you are Durango. They had that big victory yesterday against Francis Parker. Shaker only able to beat him by two runs. Francis Parker lost, however, to the Trail Blazers. 11 to nothing through five innings. It was a great offensive performance for these Trail Blazers, and that'll bring up the righty number 13. Durango in these pinstripe uniforms. We saw pinstripe uniforms yesterday as well. These all blue uniforms with yellow pinstripes. This pitch fouled off over to the right side, over the fencing behind the Trailblazer dugout. Tyler Zach so far pitching well. He just got that contact against the leadoff man. Not exactly ideal, but he's going to be able to bounce back, hopefully. And here's a stealing attempt. Quint Garnett on target, and he is out by a mile. Holy cow, what a throw from the catcher. Quinton Garnett on target, as always. There you go. Number six with a big play early behind the dish. But we've still got the man at the plate. Number 13, there's two strikes on him now. Zero balls, one man away now with nobody on. The kick and the pitch from the right-hand pitcher. This one's fouled off into the cages. Andrew Fogarty going to run into the backstop, make that play on the ball. Doesn't exactly matter, but he's going to be the man to give that ball right back to the umpire. TZ, however, Tyler Zach gets the new baseball. The kick, the pitch, the 0-2 pitch once more. This one's tipped off the baseball bat into the glove of Quentin Garnett, and that will be strike three. Good foul tip handled by Quentin Garnett. There's out number two, and Tyler Zach making quick work of the first two guys. Number seven with a very hectic batting stance. Leaning on that right foot. Here's the first pitch to him. This one's blasted in the left, but it'll be down foul to the left of that third base line. Tyler Zach now in a hitter's count. 
That was only his sixth pitch. You never know how quick he can flip sides here for his offense to get something cooking. The next offering, and he was thinking about going, but he held off, says the umpire at first. The batter here, Mercurius, number seven, still leading on that right foot. He continues to tap the left foot down. There's a good pitch from Tyler Zach that time around. Shaker in their red t-shirt jerseys. Tyler Zach technically wearing number 22. But again, when Shaker gets those all new jerseys back home, we'll see what his number is there. That pitch almost ran in and got Mercurius. Luckily it did not, but that will give him the first ball on the count. One ball, two strikes, two away. He's one strike away from having an under 10 pitch inning. We'll see if that happens here. Or excuse me, this is going to be his 10th pitch. This one down the third baseline, once again foul. Mercurius having a good A-B. That's what we can expect from the leadoff man that's currently occupying short for the Red Raiders. He had some great A-Bs, not able to get on base, but Aaron Neiman did really fight in his at-bats. We'll see how he does in the leadoff spot today. The kick, the pitch from Tyler Zach, one away from a strikeout, but this one's sent into left center. Will Tagan goes over to his right. He is under it. He'll make the grab. Tyler Zach with an 11 pitch first inning, and that is one way to get your team amped up. Now the offense will come out to the batter's box, and we will be right back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here with the call from Southern California. Due up will be the number one, two, and three guys, Aaron Neiman, Quentin Garnett, and, of course, Will Tagan. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. Aaron Neiman, the leadoff guy here today, wearing number 15 on the back of his jersey. Also due up will be the catcher, Quentin Garnett, and Will Tagan, who was occupying center. He made that final out of the top of the first. Tyler Zach with a good start to the game and an 11-pitch first inning. He's racked up one strikeout and one hit through that top of the first. And now the pitcher... This guy, I have been told, is a speedster. Per the assistant coach, Joe Welsh, he told me this guy is pushing 92 miles per hour. Shaker did well on the defensive. Can they keep it up? Is That's the question, but for now, we're going to see their offense at work. The freshman at short, leading off today, as he said to me this morning, it shows that the coach has a lot of trust in him and so here is the opportunity to keep that trust with a good performance at the plate. First pitch to him. A speedy pitch, and it'll catch the strike zone. Strike one, Aaron Neiman held off. The next to him. Cut on and missed. He was early, trying to go with a very early swing. The dugout telling him to stay back. The kick, the pitch from the righty. Cut on and missed. Unfortunately for him, he'll go down on three strikes. And upcoming now is going to be the right-handed man, Quinton Garnett. He was able to put on a show behind the dish with that arm catching 
the man trying to advance from first to second on the steal. Quinton Garnett got him with a strong throw with the right arm. And now here he is looking for a big swing. Here is a pitch down low and away, says the umpire. Good eye from the catcher. Now Durango's pitcher once more. Upstairs, there's ball three on him. Quinton Garnett holding back. You can't imagine he's going to take a hack at this one as this is going to be the seventh pitch. That time it's going to be a strike in there, making the count three and one. There's one away here in the bottom of the first and what is a scoreless game for now. Next pitch. Low and inside, ball four. Quinton Garnett earns his spot over at first, and that'll bring the Will bat, or excuse me, the big bat of Will Tagan up to the right-handed batter's box. Making sure the batter's box is to his liking. He'll scrape it with the bottom of his right cleat, and now he's in. The new balance cleats taking the back of the right-handed batter's box. That'll get through, at least it should, and yes, indeed it will. Into shallow left center, it's a single. Quinn Garnett gonna hold at second. And that'll bring up the designated hitter, the big man, C.J. Landrum. Now a man on first and a man on second for the designated hitter. Again, he's got some power behind the bat. Yesterday, or excuse me, against Francis Parker, he actually stole a base. I do believe, or actually I believe that was yesterday against Morse. Leans back in the batter's box. Once again, another right-handed hitter. And so far, Mercurius is really struggling at the mound. This one sent right to a fan over the fence. That was straight to him. He tried to make the catch. I believe that actually was dropped, fell down the hill. Unfortunate. Now he's going to have to throw this one back over the fence. One strike on him now after the foul. This one's sent up the middle. Are they going to try a double play? Indeed they will. He gets him over at first. He tapped on the second. Makes the throw on time. There is out number two and number three. So Shaker gets two men on. However, they're going to leave one man on. Not able to get any across. 0-0 zero, zero after the very first inning. And that'll bring up Tyler Zach back out to the mound. He's going to warm up and we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back for the call at the top of the second inning. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here from Southern California. Tyler Zach back out to the mound in his first inning. He had a good inning, 11 pitches, one strikeout, one hit was given up, but Quentin Garnett was able to catch the guy stealing. First pitch of the inning inside on number 17, the big batter in the right-handed batter's box. Trailblazers 
Seemed like they were getting something going at first, but Quinton Garnett's strong right arm was really able to mow him down over at second. And he got him by a mile on the steal attempt. The batter, Shuford. One ball, one strike on him now. This one sent down the third baseline. Foul to the side of that Shaker Heights dugout. Shaker Heights, 240, or excuse me, over 2,400 miles away from home base. Shaker Heights High School up in Northeast Ohio. They are actually under 10 miles away from the border of Mexico. So you already know it is warm. It is lovely out here in Chula Vista. 67 degrees technically, but it's around 70. At least that's what it feels like due to the sun up in the sky. No clouds in view as well. Here's the next pitch on a two strike count, or excuse me, a three ball count. They call the last one a ball, but there will be strike number two on the foul to the left side. Three balls, two strikes. We're to a full count with no one away. That was the 16th pitch there. The 17th from Tyler Zach will be on its way with the kick of the left leg in the throw. And that one upstairs and in. Shuford earns his walk. He'll take the jog over at first. Now we'll see if he is a danger to steal as well, but now they know Quentin Garnett is for real behind the dish. Luna the batter, wearing number 24 on the back of his white pinstripe jersey. Man over at first, nobody out in the top of the second. Tyler Zach needs to find that groove once more. He almost was able to get that strike out, but the pitch just upstairs and in, that led to the walk that time. It will be strike one. He found the outside half of the plate. Or excuse me, he called it a ball. I've just been informed. Man over at first is Shuford. Tyler's not going to make the throw, checking the runner at first. Casey Robinson throws the right back where it came from. Zach. It is now getting set to throw it back to home plate. And now here's a bunt attempt down the third place line. They're going to wait for this one to end up foul. Andrew Burley with some patience, letting that one roll down the white line. And there's foul one and strike one. We're even, one ball, one strike. Man at first in the top of the second, nobody out in a scoreless game. Shuford taking the lead over at first, Luna the right-handed batter. My goodness, what a gorgeous day out here in Chula Vista. Very Southern California. Again, less than 10 miles away from the border of Mexico. Here's another bunt attempt and this one's going to get back to Quinton Garnett. He's gonna make the throw over to first. Casey Robinson needs to jump up a little bit to make the catch, but he will touch down on first before the batter can. They will advance the runner over to second. So Shuford now in scoring position, and that's going to bring up the batter, number 23. Crosby backs his way up into the batter's box. His right foot against the front tip of the batter's box. And now the first pitch upstairs. Crosby wanting to duck out of the way of that one. Durango, the school in Nevada wearing purple and gold. Those are their two primary colors. Actually, a graduate of the school, Tommy Pham, the MLB player, I believe currently with the New York Mets. This pitch low, two balls, no strikes to Crosby. Man on second, he's in scoring position with one away after the sacrifice bunt. 23rd pitch from Tyler Zach will be on its way in one moment. He gives Quentin Garnett, the catcher, a nod. Checks the runner at second. Kick of the left leg and the pitch is on its way. This one's sent into center where Will Tag and get under it quick enough. Makes the diving play on it. The man from third will tag. And he will be in safely, but my goodness, what a snag from Will Tagan shifting over to his left. Man on third, but now there's two away. And a tense position for the next man up for the Trailblazers. 
big run and grab for Will Tegan, collapsing as he made the grab out in center. And that's why he's already commit to Washington out in, I believe, St. Louis. First pitch will find the strike zone. Good pitch, just a little bit upstairs and a little bit in. Batter didn't feel comfortable with it. That's always going to make you feel jammed as a batter. Make you feel very tense. Strike one. No balls with two away and a man on third for Tyler Zach now. The batter, DeSoto, he'll file this one away on the second pitch to him over the Durango dugout and foul. DeSoto, a bigger man, number 19 on the back of his jersey. One strike away from ending the top of the second. Maybe he's going to get him to chase here, however. The pitch. And this is going to be in on the hands. It's going to get him. That's always unfortunate. A two-strike count, and he hit him. Two outs in the top of the second. Now we've got runners at the corners. Now the batter is going to be number 25, Farrell. A thinner guy than the two men at the corners. But we'll see what kind of power he has or if he can make contact in the first place. First pitch to him, and there is the contact. Neiman makes the throw on the second. He'll get the force out. That's the end of the top of the second. Good pitching from Tyler Zach to start us off. He's had many good games last year. He pitched the complete game shutout against rival Cleveland Heights. And here in his junior year, he's looking to replicate that kind of success. Shaker talking things over outside of their dugout. Their bats will be back up against home plate. We'll see what they can do against this stud of a pitcher. Again, a speedster. We'll tell you more about it when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum. We'll be back for the call of the bottom of the second. That's going to bring up today's Red Raider first baseman, Casey Robinson. The sophomore hitting left. Mercurius back on the hill. He had a bit of a shaky first inning, but once again, he is back to throwing those speedy little fastballs. One strike to Casey Robinson on the swing. Now the next offering, cut on, missed once more. Through the first inning pitched, he gave up one hit. He gave up one walk. He did get a strikeout, however. Here's the pitch. Off the plate. Ball one. One, two, the count. He's got to protect, but clearly he has the patience with taking the ball there. Next offer. That time he will pound the strike zone once more. Casey Robinson watches that one go by. Strike three is the call. Casey Robinson heads to the dugout. In replacement, Nemo Crosby hitting right today. He is your right fielder, and we'll see what he can do here. 0-0, zero, zero, your score in the bottom of the second there. An uncomfortable swing from Nemo Crosby. However, he recovers, stands in the batter's box. 
dugout telling him he just needs to relax. Zero balls. One strike, one away for Nemo Crosby. And now the next offering, cut on, missed once more. And you can tell this pitcher, Mercurius, with two strikeouts now, he, he has a different kind of presence. When you pound the strike zone at this age, you know you are confident. And that time, on the lower half of the strike zone, he will get the called strike three. Nemo Crosby took it. And that is the third strikeout for Mercurius, second of the inning. And that'll bring up the third man due up in the bottom of the second. Colin Richard, elevated from JV. He was on JV last year, but now in his senior year, he's making this varsity appearance. Pinch ran a couple times in that first game against Francis Parker. Yesterday, he also got a chance at the plate when the game seemed a bit out of reach at an eight nothing score. That time, the pitch will be off the plate. One ball, one strike to Richard. Two away for him now. Maybe you can get a two out rally going. Behind him would be O'Shea Howard. Next pitch to Richard, cut on and missed. Two strikes to him now, one ball as well. Two outs in a 0-0 game. The kick, the pitch, cut on, missed once more. He strikes out the side. And he'll take his stroll back to the dugout. He had a successful bottom of the second. Three up, three down for the Red Raiders. Now we'll see what Tyler Zach can do. It's his job to keep the score exactly where it is. 0-0 zero, zero is your score through the first two. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Olam here with the call in Southern California. Tyler Zach taking his warm-up pitches, and he'll be back to it. And I'll be here with the call. And we are back for the top of the third. Thank you very much for joining us. We are out here in very Southern California. The first pitch from Tyler Zach will be upstairs here as we begin the top of the third. Tyler Zach through the first two was able to get one strikeout. However, he did get one hit and one walk, but his team was able to take care of it. 28 pitches, 17 strikes. This one lined in the left. Getting there is going to be the left fielder. Trying to make the throw into second. Can he beat him? He cannot. He's just in safely at second. Payton with the leadoff double. Colin Richard tried to make that throw. And now the Red Raider dugout trying to amp up Tyler Zach. Hopefully he'll get that momentum right back after the leadoff double. That is a rough start to the top of the third, but we know he is capable to pick this team back up. Capitini, the batter, number five, hitting right. The man at second is Payton. He'll take a solid lead over at second. Tyler Zach will check him, but he won't make a throw. And here it's gonna get away from Quentin Garnett. Hesitated to make the throw to third, and he will decide not to do so. 
As Payne advances from second to third, there's nobody out in the third. Capitini one for one here in RBI opportunity for the left fielder at the top of the order. The kick, the pitch to him now, upstairs and inside, two balls, no strikes. Nobody out with the man on third. Tyler Zach now, that was his 31st pitch. He's thrown 18 strikes. And the next offering to Capitini. This one's fouled over the fence. Out of play, strike one to him now. And he could really use that strike. And this one's grounded right back to Tyler Zach. You wonder if he's going to make that throw home, but we'll see. We have to get there first. Here's a ball low and away. Ball three, one strike. Man on third in the top of the third. Cappuccini already one for one with the leadoff hit in the top of the first. Looking to get a hit this time for an RBI knock. This one cut on and missed. Good pitch location that time from the junior Tyler Zach. Can he do it again with a payoff pitch? Three balls and two strikes. We've got a full count with a man on third. A tense situation for Capitini, the righty, and the pitch to him. And they're going to say this is a walk. Good pitch location. And this time the throw from Quentin Garnett going to get away from Tyler Zach. Luckily, O'Shea Howard gets in quickly before the man at third could make the advancement home. And now we're going to get time called by the head coach, Stephen English. Runners are at the corners with nobody out in the top of the third. So yes, this is a pretty solid time to make that mound visit. He brings in the infield and the catcher, Garnett. 35 pitches for Tyler Zach so far, 20 of which were strikes. He's faced 10 batters so far. He's given up two hits and two walks. Struck out one. He's also hit him at. Pereira, the batter, hitting right once more. This team not exactly balanced in the lefty-righty ratio. But with the righty pitching, that's kind of what you want. Runners at the corners. Here's the first pitch. This one's up the middle. Will they get the double play? Here's to Neiman. Neiman, the throw on the first. Double play. The runner does advance. one nothing is your score, but a good double play for Shaker to get out of a jam. And so now we've got two outs with nobody on in a one nothing game. Big double play created by the freshman at short, Aaron Neiman. He's hitting leadoff today as well. So he is due up for the bottom of the third after we flip sides. Tyler Zach takes a moment, takes the pitch. This one's lined in the left. Colin Richard ranges back. He makes the catch out and left. Tyler Zach gets out of the jam. He does give up one. But once again, another solid inning defensively from Shaker Heights High School. And now their offense needs to pick things up as now they need to do a little bit of catch up. one nothing is your score. Durango and the Trail Blazers lead. Let's see. The men do up O'Shea Howard, Andrew Burley, and then back to the top of the lineup, the freshman Aaron Neiman. We'll talk to you more about it when we come back for the bottom of the third. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum. We'll be back for the call of the bottom of the third inning.
O'Shea Howard, the batter, to lead us off in the bottom of the third. Gives a fist bump to the catcher, a sign of respect from the Red Raider batter, hitting right. Now the speedster back to it on the mound, pitch upstairs, a ball. And now O'Shea starts himself in a hitter's count. one nothing is your score. Durango was able to get one across in the top of the third. That next pitch in there for strike one. Now we're back to an even count. Nobody out. We're just getting set in the bottom of the third in a one-run game now. The speedster on the mound throws another one. O'Shea Howard's way, and this one's fouled up almost over the far fence, over the hill. Big powerful swing from O'Shea Howard, but now he's got to protect with two strikes. One ball, two strikes on him now. 26th pitch from number seven, Mercurius, is on its way, and it's cut on and missed. Howard strikes out for the first out of the bottom of the third. Strike out number five for Mercurius. He's looking to get six before the first nine are done. Andrew Burley steps in to the right-handed batter's box, looking to get something going for the top of the order. Aaron Neiman due up after. First pitch to Burley. Cut on and missed. This is when it helps to have Will Berglund in the lineup. He has been having a lot of power swings here today. There's another swing and miss from Burley. But in that game against Francis Parker, he had a solo shot to left. He also had the ground rule double and walk. But today he is out for a rest day. So is Brett Moore. He is out of the lineup after getting the two starts yesterday. There's strike three called out number two. Six strikeouts through the First time of the batting order, and that'll bring up the freshman once more, Aaron Neiman. He was one of those strikeouts. The three that didn't strike out were the next three due up, and this one's cut on over the fence behind me and almost into that softball field behind home plate. We got the softball field behind us, but out in left we have solar panels covering the parking spaces. We've seen that a lot in California. This one's fouled back, strike two. We've seen a lot of solar panels covering the parking spots because if you want a solar paneled field, you might as well cover the cars. And this one's low, trying to get the freshman to chase, but he thinks better. One ball, two strikes, two away in the bottom of the third. Nobody's on. Out in right, just a lot of trees. Not all palm trees, but you can see a lot of palm trees around this baseball field, and that's what you're going to get in Southern Cal. One ball, two strikes to Aaron Neiman. The kick, the pitch to the freshman. This one's down the first baseline. Foul, and we're going to do it again. Freshman Aaron Neiman in the leadoff spot. Finds it as a big sign of trust from his coach, and he's just trying to prove himself now after that trust was given to him. A ball and a strike once more on him. After the foul, we're going to do it again with two outs. They're kicking the pitch from Mercurius. This one's cut on, fouled back to Quentin Garnett in the on-deck circle. He'll make the one-hop grab. So once more for the third time, one ball, two strikes. We'll do it again. Two outs, bottom of the third, no one on in a one-run game. The next pitch from Mercurius. This one's fouled off once more, and this is what we saw a lot against Morse yesterday. He just battles in his ABs. And as a freshman, having that kind of patience and confidence, you got to respect the kid. Mercurius needs to find a put-away pitch on his 36th of the day. And this next one will be that put away pitch. It's cut on and missed. Strike three. And that is his already Mercurius' seventh strikeout. He has had himself a day so far, but we're only through three. We've got four more to go. We'll be back for the call of the top of the fourth. The junior, Tyler Zach, back on the mound. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here with the call from Chula Vista, California.
And we are back at the Ote Ranch High School baseball field. Tyler Zach back on to the top of the fourth. The hitter, a righty number 17, number two in the batting order. And he will take strike one to open up his count. One nothing your score, Durango leads. After they got one on an RBI double play, wasn't exactly ideal for Durango, but again, they did get that run coming across. Here we are at the Ote Ranch High School baseball field, home of the Mustangs, where the Durango Trailblazers from Nevada and the Shaker Heights High School Raiders from Ohio are facing off. It's an interesting scene that you're not gonna see every day. Here's a pitch low. Another ball from Tyler Zach on his 40th pitch, ball three. Three balls, no strikes to this batter, number 17, Shuford. He's 0 for 0. He walked his first time. And now that next pitch upstairs. Or excuse me, Shuford actually got, oh, yes, he did get walked. Another batter was hit by a pitch as well the first time through. So first batter on in a four-pitch walk. Quentin Garnett continuing to catch the balls and strikes. Hasn't let many get past him. He let one get past him, but he was quick to recover, not letting any of the runners advance. Number 24 of the batter, that's Luna. He's 0 for 0 as well. He was the man that was hit by the pitch. And now here's a throw back to first. Back in on a dive is Shuford. A bigger man is Shuford, but he's had some good ABs to start him, his game off. The 40-second pitch from Tyler Zach on its way, and they love their sacrifice bunts. Here's the throw from Burley on the first. Luna can't beat it out. He will advance the runner from first to second. There's out number one for Tyler Zach. one nothing is your score. Durango still leads. And still just about no clouds up in the sky. It is now 67 degrees. But again, it feels like 70 or maybe a little bit more as it is sunny out here today. They kick the pitch from Tyler Zach. This one's off the plate, a ball to open up this count on number 23, the right-handed batter. That's Luna. One out, one man on in scoring position. And here in the top of the fourth, Shaker needing to leave this one where it is score-wise, but that's probably going to bring in a man. A throw into shallow center. Here's the throw, and it would have been on target. They would have beaten him. So the man over at third actually stays where he is. My goodness, what a hit. But what a great throw in from Will Tagan. So that was actually Crosby on the knock. So he'll bring himself to first, advance the runner from second to third. There's one man out, double play is in order. It's a one nothing score. Tyler Zach wants to leave that as the case. DeSoto, the batter now, he was hit by a pitch. And now that one right back up the middle. It's through in the shallow center, Will Tagan. Scooping it up, sending it back in to the infield. That'll bring in another man to score. 2-0 now your score. Now there's runners at first and second. Double play still in order. Can Zach limit the damage? The batter down, number 25. Another right-handed batter. As now it is going to be Farrell. Crosby at second. DeSoto over at first. Tyler Zach to kick the pitch. And this time it's going to be ball one, once more. One ball, no strikes, one out, two men on, one in scoring position, two nothing, your score in the top of the fourth. The batter, Farrell, who's 0 for 1 to start off his day at the plate. Each batter, or excuse me, each runner is taking some hefty leads, but Tyler Zach not going to make any motion towards him. There is a high pitch and a high swing from Farrell. He got him chasing upstairs. 47th pitch from Tyler Zach, so his 48th is going to be delivered in just a moment. Oh, 
Once again, some hefty leads from the two runners in white pinstripe jerseys. The next offering, that'll catch the strike zone once more. And now he's in a pitcher's count. One ball, two strikes. There's one away with two men on. The second run for Durango just came across. Shaker yet to get anything. The kick, the pitch this time. This one's cut on right to the freshman at short, Aaron Neiman. That's more than likely going to go as an error, and it's going to bring in a run as well as the men from second made his way all around third and home to score. Three nothing now your score. An unfortunate error for the freshman. Trailblazers triple their lead here in the inning. Tyler Zach just needs to slow things down now. Two men on. One out in a three-run game. 50th pitch from Tyler Zach is on its way. That time it's upstairs. Quentin Garnett handles it. Sends it right back where it came from. DeSoto on second and it's Farrell on first. Tyler Zach, through his first 50 pitches, has thrown 28 strikes. Now the next offering. This one's up. Who will play? It looks like it's Casey Robinson. He'll make the play over his head. Great catch by the sophomore first baseman. And that is a big, much needed out for the junior pitcher, Tyler Zach. 3 nothing. your score. The Trailblazers lead it. They're looking to extend that lead. With the swing of the bat from the next man up, and that's going to be back to the top of the lineup, the left fielder, Capitini. He's one for one so far. He also walked. And the first pitch to him, low. Quinn Garnett keeps it in front of him, not letting anyone advance. As Farrell will stick at first, DeSoto will stick at second. Tyler Zach with his 53rd pitch upcoming. One ball, no strikes to Capitini, but there's two away. Bit of a tense position with the man in scoring position. Now the next offering. He will hold off. He hesitated on the swing, but regardless, it's going to be called a strike no matter the case. Thank you very much for tuning in to hear from Chula Vista, Southern California, Shaker Heights, Took that plane flight to Phoenix and the layover flight over to San Diego on Saturday. And here they are in their third game of the tournament. There's ball two. Two balls, one strike. Two outs, two bet on. Looking to limit the damage is Tyler Zach. The next offering, that's going to run in and it's going to get him. Capitini gets hit in the numbers. And so he's going to jog his way over to first. Bases now are loaded with two outs. If it gets any more out of hand, you can assume head coach Stefan English would take another mound visit. But for now, he's still able to leave it a three-run game with the two outs. Pereira 0 for 2. Tyler Zach looking to make that 0 for 3. The kick, the pitch. This time it's low and away, ball one. Durango with four hits so far. Shaker with only one error defensively. That was that Aaron Neiman error at the shortstop position. Next pitch. This one's foul tipped into the glove of Quinton Garnett. A strike. And that'll leave it our count. One ball, one strike. The bases are loaded. This has been the shakier inning of his outing today. But he's still able to limit the damage to two runs in the inning. The kick and the pitch. This one's very much upstairs over the head of Pereira. Two balls, one strike now. Pereira looking for an RBI knock if he's not able to get a walk. A walk would be ideal. And this time with another pitch upstairs, three balls, one ball away from walking in a run. He walked in a few runs against Francis Parker two days back. He's not looking to have that same kind of luck. 
Three balls, one strike. The next pitch with two outs. This one's fouled back. And so now we work our way to a full count in a tense situation. Three balls, two strikes. Bases are loaded with two away. The man on first, Cappuccini, Farrell at second, and DeSoto the runner at third. Pereira the batter. Taking his batting stance with a black and pink bat. The next pitch, this one's cut on to O'Shea Howard. He'll make the one-hop scoop. He'll send it to Casey Robinson over at first, and he'll leave three men on. Dangerous situation for Taylor Zach, but he'll stop the bleeding at two runs in the top of the fourth, and now Shaker needs to get some runs across. They've only had one hit. They've struck out seven times. Let's see what they can do. The three men that didn't strike out so far are Quinn Garnett, Will Tagan, and C.J. Landrum, and they're the next three do up. We'll see what they can do when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum. We'll be back for the call of the bottom of the fourth. Leading off the bottom of the fourth in the second half of the game, actually, if you want to think about it that way, is Quinton Garnett, the catcher in today's affair. He was at third yesterday. He was a catcher in the first game, and there is a rough swing for the catcher to lead off his count. One, or excuse me, zero balls, one strike, nobody out as we're just getting set. Mercurius with his 38th on its way, and it'll be off the plate, one ball, one strike. We're back to even. 3-0 is your score. The Trailblazers lead after getting one in the third and two in the top of the fourth. And that one will be sent into the strike zone. Uh, Quentin Garnett takes it for strike number two. And now the next one swung on and missed. There's an other strikeout. For the big man on the mound, eight strikeouts for him now, and that'll bring up Will Tagan, number eight. He's had a slower start to this San Diego tournament, but we know it's Will Tagan. We know what he can do at the plate. The first pitch to him in the eight, in the at bat will go for ball one. Last year, Will Tagan did lead the team in batting average. I believe it was over 350. And the next offering to him, that will catch the strike zone. One ball, one strike. There's one away here in the bottom of the fourth. Three nothing, your score will take in. Trying to get something going for him now. The next pitch on its way, strike two. One ball, two strikes. Will Tagan is one for one. Again, he was two of three guys that hadn't struck out. Now Quentin Garnett has struck out, so now it's just Tagan and Landrum. This one's cut on. Will it get through the shortstop? It will not, but that is a long throw to make. Tagan beats it out. The throw also gets away. Tagan debating whether he wants to round first and actually go to second, but he'll think better of doing that. That's just a bit too risky. But Tagan is on with one man out, and that'll bring up the big man, C.J. Landrum. The O-lineman on the football team has power behind the bat, and when you're an O-lineman on the football team, you kind of 
Got to have that kind of strength. Number 25 on the back of his jersey. He's 0 for 1. Next offering upstairs, ball one, zero strikes, one out. Last time he hit into a double play. The double play is once again in order for Landrum. He'll step into the back side of the batter's box. And the next pitch to him, down low, another ball. Two balls, no strikes. Mercurius nearing 50. That was his 46th, his 47th. Is on its way now. 87 was his last pitch. Now the next offering cut on and missed. He was going low for that swing and miss. But the pitch got very low on him. He wasn't able to make any contact. Landry. Two balls, one strike to him. The next offering cut on and missed. That'll even us up. Two balls, two strikes. There's one out with one man on in the form of Will Tegan at first. Mercurius about to send his 49th over home plate. Assuming he's on target. Now Will Tegan... With the dive back into first, checking the runner, was Mercurius throwing over to DeSoto, who's covering first. C.J. Landrum steps back into the box. He's in an even count and two balls and two strikes. And now this one upstairs, ball, f ooh, never mind. He found the strike zone. C.J. Landrum thought he was safe, a bit of a late call from the umpire, but he will make that call strike number three. C.J. Landrum to the dugout. Casey Robinson out of the dugout. Nine strikeouts already for Mercurius. Now the next pitch. Casey Robinson swing and a miss. He struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Will Tegan taking the lead from first. We'll see if he's going to play a risky now. As C.J. Landrum now swings and misses once more, it's strike two. Mercurius having a day on the mound. And now here's a pickoff attempt. Taken back in safely. One strike away from his 10th. Mercurius with his 51st on its way. Taken on the stealing attempt, the throw. A little bit off target. He was able to make the catch over at second, but Tegan slides in safely. He's in with the steal of second, and he's in scoring position. But keep in mind, one ball and two strikes on Casey Robinson with two outs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Next pitch to Casey Robinson. Just barely off the plate, trying to get him to chase it. Two balls, two strikes. We're back to even with two outs as well. A lot of twos up on that scoreboard. Mercurius looking to leave that man on second, and indeed he will. Casey Robinson took strike three, and there is strikeout number 10 for Mercurius. Four innings, 10 strikeouts. Have yourself a day, Mercurius. And we are going to see the junior, Tyler Zach, back up to the mound. His last two innings were a bit shaky. He's looking to slow things down now. Here in the top of the fifth, we'll see what he can do. It's his job to leave it right where it is at a three-run game. Can he do it? Your answers will be answered, or excuse me, your questions will be answered when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here from Southern California.
Tyler Zach back on the hill for the top of the fifth. The first offering will be cut on this one down the third baseline and a land foul for strike number one. Three nothing is your score. Durango leads. The Trail Blazers haven't had a ton of success at the plate, but they've had more than Shaker. There's a big swing and miss from Merc Mercurius. He's the man that's been on the mound for Durango, and he's just been incredible on the hill. But at the plate, he's 0 for 2. Tyler Zach trying to make that 0 for 3. The next pitch, this one's popped up. It looks like it'll have the depth to get to Nemo Crosby. He was covering right center. They must have had a good read on this guy and where he was going to hit it. As he was further center than typically seen. But he'll make the catch. There's out number one. Tyler Zach with 64 pitches now. Looking for his 65th to be over the plate. Shuford 0 for 0. As he has got two walks on him now. He's the catcher for Durango. First swing, a first miss. Good pitch location that time for the junior pitcher for the Red Raiders. Now the next offering after the left leg kick. This one's cut on into left. Will that get down fair? Yes, it will, just barely. And it'll get to the warning track. The throw in. He's in with a standing double with one away. Shuford gets his statistic to two walks and one double. And, and now they're looking to move to a four-run game if they can. It's all up to the next man up. And that's going to be the designated hitter, Luna. Luna with the man in scoring position and one out. Here in the top of the fifth, it is a beauty of a day. Next pitch almost got away from Quinton Garner, but he has the starting job for a reason. He keeps it in front of him. Doesn't let Shuford over at second advance. There's ball one. No strikes. That was the beginning of Luna's count. The next offering, this one's swung on. Into shallow center. We'll take and get to it. He will not. It'll ploop down past second. And there is a single advantage. The man from second over to third. Runners at the corners with one away and a three-run ball game. Double play is in order if they want to end this inning quickly. The next batter up is Crosby. He's one for two on the day. First pitch in there, strike one. He came across for a run his second time out. The RBI not came from DeSoto, who is currently on the on-deck circle. This pitch. Swung on, it's going to be to Will Tagan. The man tagging from third. The throw in will be to third. Not exactly sure why that's the throw location, but the man from third will advance home. There's run number four for the Trailblazers. Four nothing now, your score. DeSoto, one for one. 70 pitches from Tyler Zach. Four runs given up now. And the man is still on first. Checking the runner over at first. The throw going to get away from Robinson. So he's going to need to get this all the way back in shallow right. Rounding second, but he's going to hold up there. Two outs. Now we got the man advancing from first to second. And now it's really an RBI opportunity for DeSoto. It's one for one. DeSoto hit by a pitch as well. But, yeah, he got that RBI knock in his last appearance. 
Number 19 on the back of his jersey. Bat lifted above his shoulders. This one's cut on into the cage above the backstop. A foul. There's strike one on him. No balls. One strike, two outs with a man on second in the form of Loon, the runner. Next offering. That one looked a bit upstairs, but the umpire decides not. He'll rule that one strike two. And now he is in a pitcher's count. Let's see if Tyler Zach wants to get him to chase or if he just is going to play it aggressive and just try to head to the dugout as quick as possible. The next pitch, this one's fouled back over the fence behind home plate. It'll land on that hill behind home plate and roll its way down. Tyler Zach still in an 0-2 count. The batter, DeSoto, two outs. One man on second. Once again, a lot of twos up on the board. And there's a big swing and miss. Zach gets him chasing. And strike three will limit the damage to one run coming across here up of the fifth inning. However, the damage is done. They are still up four innings. And with Mercurius heading back to the mound, this offense really needs to figure him out, and they need to figure him out quick. They've got nine outs to work with. We'll tell you all about those nine outs and what this Red Raider offense can do when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here in Southern California with the call. First pitch to Demo Crosby called a strike. And the next offering it will be a swinging strike. So not exactly a hot start to his at bat. But now the next to him, it'll be another swing and miss. So he gets him quickly. Three pitches, three strikes, one strike out. And that'll bring up Colin Richard. He's had a couple movements out in left field here today. He's the seventh man in the batting order. He struck out his first time up. And there's a swing and miss to begin as that bat. Mercurius looking to get that same kind of luck on the man in the right-handed batter's box. Cut on and missed once more. This is a fast pitcher. Mercurius is just having himself a day. How many strikeouts does he have now? 11. And there's number 12 as he gets the called strike three. And already two outs. Here in the bottom of the fifth, my goodness. O'Shea Howard comes up. He is the eighth man in the batting order. Behind him, Andrew Burley at the bottom. And the first offering to Howard is going to be off the plate, ball one. A bit low and away. Mercurius with the left leg kick in the next pitch. It'll be off the plate once more. Two balls, no strikes. Next pitch, this one cut on and missed. Strike number two, or excuse me, strike number one. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Next pitch, this time Howard thought it was inside. He backed up a little bit, but it'll be ruled strike two. So now a lot of twos up on the scoreboard once more. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, but there's ball three. Bit of a tense situation for Howard. We've got three balls, two strikes, two outs. The payoff pitch on its way. Cut on and missed. Strike three, strikeout number 13. Former Curious on the mound, and he will take his leisurely stroll back to the dugout. He's having a day on the hill, and he's not done yet. 
That was only inning number five. So now we're up to the top of the sixth. Tyler Zach returns to the hill. He's given up four, and his offense hasn't really backed him up either. So we'll see how this one turns out. Two more innings left to go, the sixth and the seventh. Durango up for nothing. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here from Southern California. I'll be here with the call for the final two innings. Tyler Zach back on the bump for the top of the sixth inning. First batter is going to be number 25 in the batter's box. And we'll see. Tyler Zach had a much more efficient last inning. However, he hasn't thrown a zero up on the scoreboard since the second. In foul territory, this one's popped up. Andrew Burley trying to play it, and it goes over to his left side, and it's dropped in foul territory. So it'll go as strike number one. Rough look for the senior, but still, it's not a hit. So one strike on number 25, Farrell. He's 0 for 2 here today. And the next offering to him is upstairs, ball one. One ball, one strike. Zero outs as we're just getting set for the top of the second to last inning. Now the next to him, here's strike. That was the 77th from Tyler Zach. The 78th will be upcoming. Farrell with two strikes on him now, one ball as well. Zero outs in a four-run ball game. Looking to get some more insurance is Durango. That time looking to get him to chase the pitch outside and low for ball two. No substitutions have been made in the field just yet. We typically see that in the final couple innings if the coach doesn't like what he sees, but I suppose that the coach is content with what he's got. Down the first baseline, this one's popped up and foul. The right fielder, Nemo Crosby, not able to range over and get it quick enough. The 80th pitch from Tyler Zach is on its way in a two ball, two strike count. Here's the pitch, and that time it ran in and it got him. The third man, he's hitting this one. He's also walked three as well. He's got two strikeouts here today. So now Tyler Zach just needs to th slow things down. The man at the plate is going to be number three. That's Payne. He's the last guy in the batting order. He's one for two. Farrell over at first. Nobody out in the top of the sixth. And now here's a quick throw over to first. Casey Robinson makes the catch, but he is in safely. Farrell back in on the dive. Tyler Zach with 80 pitches. The 81st is cut on. This one to shortstop. Neiman takes it off the bounce, and he struggles on the transfer. He'll drop it, and we'll get the man from first moving to second, and Payne moving to first. And there is another error 
on Aaron Neiman. That's his second at shortstop today. Yesterday he got the start at second, not exactly a totally different position. But I suppose just not exactly comfortable yet for him. This one's popped up. Tyler Zach going to make the play on it. The throw on the first. He beat it out. It's going to be bases loaded with nobody out for the Trailblazers. And this is a dangerous situation. Last year we saw for Thomas Barrett bases loaded, nobody out. And they were able to get out of it with nobody scoring. We'll see. Does Tyler Zach have that same kind of luck? He's already through 82 pitches. Pereira is up. He's 0 for 3. He's the second man in the batting order. Just having an off day. Tyler Zach looks to keep that going. This is down the middle. Strike two. Good pitch location down low as well. Bases loaded. No balls. One strike to the hitter number 13, Pereira. Capitini at first. Payne at second. Fair runner at third. This one's cut on to Neiman and shortstop. This time he will handle it right. And he'll make the throw on to first. Here's the advancement from third home. And they call him safe as he lost the baseball in the left-handed, or excuse me, the right-handed batter's box. And at first he called it out, but he realized the baseball is right there in front of him. So Quinton Garnett thought he had it. He did not. The good thing is that there's now two outs and the bases are clear for Tyler Zach. The bad thing is now it's a five-run ball game. First pitch off the plate. A bit inside, ball number one. This could be Tyler Zach's final inning, especially if Durango continues to hit the way they have. But there is strike one on a big cut. And that'll even us up. One ball, one strike, two outs. Mercurius, the pitcher here today for Durango. However, at the plate, not exactly as successful. 0 for 3. They kick the pitch to him. This one's cut on it. And now that I say that, it'll get through third and second. And Colin Richard mishandles it. It'll bounce all the way to the warning track. And he's looking to go all the way to third. The throw in to Andrew Burley off target. And he'll be in safely with a stand-up triple. You don't want to pull your pitcher with two outs, but if they get another run, we'll see what head coach Stephen English decides to do. He's allowed six runs on two hits and three walks. However, only two earned runs for Zach. Two strikeouts is what he's handed out so far. On the other side of defense, however, 13 strikeouts. Former Curious, who just had that triple. 6 nothing. your score now. Two runs given up in the top of the sixth. They kick the pitch from Zach. This one's popped up on the infield. O'Shea Howard calls off everyone. He makes, oh, he falls back, makes the grab. Looked routine at first, but I guess the wind got to him. He'll lean back, making the collapsing grab. Looked like Odell Beckham Jr. out there in his New York Giants iconic catch. But regardless, that is out number three, and that will conclude the top of the six. Shaker needs to wake up those bats, and they need to quickly. They have six runs to make up in six outs. We'll see what they can do when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Von Ullum here with the call. We'll be right back.
And we are back at the Ote Ranch High School baseball field here in very Southern California, less than 10 miles away from the Mexican border. And in now will be a pinch hitter, Sam Luther. The first pitch to him off the plate, ball one. Sam Luther entering into today is 0 for 1. However, he's walked twice. That was in the appearance against Francis Parker. There's strike two on him as we got two back to back. One ball, two strikes on the pinch hitter, Sam Luther. We can assume he's now going to be handling the duties over at third in replacement of Andrew Burley. There's two balls, two strikes. Sam Luther held off. He was thinking about it, you could tell, by the way he shifted his elbows, but he held off. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out in the bottom of the six. That pitch will find the outside half of the strike zone. Strike three, Sam Luther heads back to the dugout. And back out will be Aaron Neiman. He has battled in each of his at-bats, however, he has struck out twice, along with four other guys in the order. Here's his third at bat, cut on and missed strike number one. There's one away for him now. Next up is going to be number two in the batting order, Quentin Garnett. One hop, two first, it's handled by DeSoto. He'll tap on first, there's out number two and Mercurius still making quick work of the order. Now up is the catcher, Quentin Garnett. He struck out once, but he also walked once. It's the one walk that Mercurius tended out. And a big swing from Quentin Garnett will go for strike one. Now the hesitate on the throw, but it won't exactly work out. It'll be off the plate. One ball, one strike. That was Mercurius's 75th of the day. Next offering. That one's off the plate. Garnett takes it for ball two. Now he's in a hitter's count, but not exactly a heavy hitter's count. Two balls, one strike. Tegan is up next if Garnett gets on. Two outs for the catcher. After the first two men, the f well, first guy went down on strikes. The next one grounded out to first. This one fouled over the cage behind the dish and over the hill. Two balls, two strikes, two outs to Quinton Garnett. Next offering. He'll take it for strike three. He looked off the plate, or at least that was his mindset on that one. However, he takes it. He'll take it for strike three. And that is strikeout number 15. For Mercurius, my goodness. What a day he is having. And out comes the Red Raider defense once more. Who will get the start on the mound? It looks like it's going to be Braden White. We'll see how he does in his very first relief appearance on the mound. We'll be right back. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum. We'll tell you about Braden White when we come back.
So Braden White now the pitcher. His first game of the tournament, he was the designated hitter. Then yesterday he was the catcher, but now he's actually going to be throwing new his catcher as he is the man on the bump. I don't know if he's ever been on the bump before. He didn't pitch last year, at least per the stats of Game Changer. It's a six-run ball game. Braden White looking to keep it that way. This one's cut on, fouled over to the right side. Is it playable? Casey Robinson heading over to the fence, but it's off the fence. Foul ball. So not exactly a bad start for Braden White. One pitch, one strike. Luna one for one on the day. Now the next offering upstairs, a ball. One ball, one strike. We're even. Shaker, if they really want to come back, they've got to leave it where it is at 6-0. You get the bats waking up in the final inning if they can. Well, they only got three more outs to work with. Let's see what they can do. This one's fouled over the fence once more. One ball, two strikes. Now the next one upstairs, number 24, the batter. Leading away from the pitch that time, Luna. Again, one for one. Now he's got an even count to him. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Braden White on the mound now. His fifth pitch will be on its way. And that's upstairs, trying to get him to hack at it up high, but he won't bite. Luna on a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out as we're just getting set in the top of the seventh and last inning. The kick and the pitch from Braden White. And he's going to call this one down low, ball four. He had him at one and two, but after that wasn't able to find a strike zone once more. And now we walk the guy, the leadoff man, Luna. And now he is over at first. That'll bring up the center fielder, Crosby. He's had one hit, one RBI, also a run in as well. First pitch to him is a bunt attempt. Braden White will handle it, make the throw on the first. He is out. The sacrifice bunt is successful as the runner will advance from base one to base two. Luna at second now on the sacrifice bunt. One away in the top of the seventh. Number 19 is the batter. It's DeSoto. One for two here today, and that pitch got away from him. The throw from Quinn Garnett, that should be in time. And no, he got under the mitt. It's a stolen base of base number three. And there you go. Scoring position once again goes a runner of these Durango Trail Blazers. Eight pitches for Braden White. The ninth will be on its way, and it's inside a ball. And that pitch upstairs. Three balls, no strikes. There's one away, and if this man comes in, it's that much harder to tie this one up in the bottom of the seventh. Six run deficit. Shaker has been shut out by Mercurius. And that pitch will be on the inside half of the plate, but it'll go for a strike. Next offering. Upstairs, ball four. Runners at the corners with one away. Double play is in order if they want to wrap this one up quickly. Now the next batter up is going to be number oof, excuse me, number 25, Farrell. Shaker, pitcher number 10, Braden White. The hat blocking the sun out of his eyes. Takes, he takes the pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Farrell 0 for 2. He's 
been hit by a pitch as well. He was the first guy to get hit by a pitch. Next pitch down low. Quentin Garnett keeps it in front of him. Doesn't let a wild pitch get too wild. And let the runner from third advance home. Two balls, no strikes on Farrell. One away with two men on. They're each at the corners. And that's going to run in, and it's going to get him. And number 24 trying to steal home as the pitch got away from him, but the umpire says no thank you. He has to stay at third whenever there's a walk like that. So now the bases are loaded with one out. Force play at any base. 15 pitches from Braden White. The runners are Farrell at first, DeSoto at second, and Luna at third. The batter is paid, one for three. First pitch will find the strike zone in there. 0-1 oh, to start off his count. Now the next one to him. That'll find the strike zone as well. Maybe he's in a bit of a groove after that first pitch strike to Payne. So back to back has him in a very heavy pitcher's count. Zero balls, two strikes with one away. But that next one trying to get him to chase down low with ball number one. Six nothing is your score. Durango leads. Braden White just trying to keep the score where it is. And that pitch. Upstairs, he got him swinging upstairs. Strike three, and only the sixth strikeout of the game. Or excuse me, that was his second strikeout. Strikeout number three for the game. Actually, oof, excuse me, I'm reading these statistics wrong. Braden White, that was his very first strikeout. Tyler Zach finished his day up with two. Braden White with the next offering. That'll be inside ball number one. There's two outs in the top of the seventh, but the bases are still loaded for Braden White to have to manage. And the man in red sending this baseball that way. This one's foul. Strike one will even us up. One ball, one strike in a six-run ball game in the final inning. It's the top of the seventh. If Shaker has hopes of coming back, they really got to make something happen immediately in the batter's box against the batter Mercurius. Capitini is two for two. Braden White wants a new baseball. The umpire saying, which one you want? He's got two in his hands. Braden White says the one in your right hand, and that's the one he's going to get. <laughs> 21 pitches for Braden White. 22nd is upstairs above the head of Capitini. Luckily, didn't get away from Quentin Garnett. He kept it in front of him. Good work from Quentin Garnett. He's had a pretty good run here in the San Diego tournament at least on the defensive if anything as he has had a time keeping him in front of him this pitch in to, sailed in the left field Colin Richard gets under it he will make the play there is out number three now the coaches need to rally the troops they're down by six with three outs remaining against a pitcher that has figured them out from the start. We'll see what the Red Raiders can do when we come back. Thank you very much for tuning in here from Southern California. We're covering Shaker Heights, Ohio baseball. We'll be right back. My name is Vaughn Olin.
Leading off for the Red Raiders in the final half inning is going to be Will Tagan. And he is exactly the man you're going to want to lead off as it's Will Tagan. If you saw Shaker Baseball last year, if you're familiar with this Will Tagan character, you know he has the ability to lead off an inning when you need it. He's two for two here today. He's got both hits off of this Mercurius. That pitch upstairs, ball two. That's the 80th from the Mercurius. Mercurius hasn't had a good time with Will Tagan. Let's see what happens here. That pitch looked inside. Will Tagan, a bit surprised, but he'll have to settle with it. Two balls, one strike to Will Tagan. Six-nothing game. Shaker needs to get something going with the leadoff man, Will Tagan. That time it'll find the strike zone once more. He went from two balls, no strikes, to two balls, two strikes. We're evened up. Will Tagan two for two. Not trying to let this pitcher get the best of him in the worst spot. Taking his time is going to be Will Tagan. The umpire grants that time to him. Takes a couple big practice swings outside of the right-handed batter's box, and now he steps back in with a hot rod blue, yellow, and orange bat in his left hand. And now he is set for it. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. The leadoff man in the bottom of the seventh. That is cut on. And Miss Mercurius gets the better of him in an unfortunate position. Will Tagan does go down for the first time here today. And he has officially struck out every batter he has faced now. Will Tagan was the last guy he had to get that stat, but now that Will Tagan has gone down on strikes, there you go. That was his 16th. And the next pitch to C.J. Landrum. It'll find the bottom half of the strike zone, strike one, in a one-out situation. Bottom of the seventh in a 6 nothing ball game, Durango leads. C.J. Landrum has struck out once. He grounded out his other time into a double play. This one down low. One ball, one strike. We're back to even. Landrum with the opportunity to get something cooking for the offense behind him. The 86th from Mercurius is on its way. The kick, the throw, and the swing and miss from C.J. Landrum. 0 for 2. Again with one strikeout and one double play. Behind C.J. Landrum, it looks as though we're going to see Will Berglund behind him. He's in the on-deck circle. The next pitch to Landrum. Cut on this one. Can it get through? It cannot. Scooped up by the first baseman. The pitcher covers first. He is out on the ground out to the first baseman, DeSoto. So that will bring up Will Berglund, and he had himself a game against Francis Parker. One solo shot to left field, a ground rule double to left field, and then a walk. But he has been out today for a rest day. But at the very end of the game, the final out, they say, just put him in. And that is the position in which he is now. First pitch to Berglund. He'll take for strike one. Trying to get a feel for the speed that Mercurius has. And Mike is fast. And once you're in the batter's box for the first time, you have to figure him quickly. Next offering. This one's fouled back over that fence to the right side. That was had some heat off the bat. And so now Shaker down to their last strike. Mercurius one strike away from the complete game shutout. Six nothing is your score. Berglund with the bat raised above his shoulders. The pitch down low, ball one. That was the 90th offering from Mercurius here today. The 91st is upcoming. And now Berglund wants time, and the umpire will give it to him. One ball, two strike on the big man. Will Berglund, he's an O-lineman on the football team for a reason.
Shaker down to their last strike. The 1-2 on the kick and pitch. This one's cut on. This is lined in the right. Will it get down? It will. He's going to round first, head to second. Will he go for three? It looks like he will. He's going to three. He'll be in safely with a stand-up triple. And there you go, Will Berglund. It'll bring up the little man, Cole Klein. He's pinch hitting. Will Berglund, there you go. He's been having himself a tournament. Nothing changes there in the pinch hit scenario. Big triple for the big man. Speed isn't his best factor, but he had a lot of power to send that baseball all the way to the warning track after the right fielder laid out for it. Tornuck laid out for it and missed it. First pitch, low but called strike. Cole Klein nicknamed Lil Baller by his teammates. That's for his Lil build, but he can still be efficient at the plate, at the mound, and in left field you'll see him as well. Ball one, strike one on Cole Klein. The next pitch outside. Two outs to the Red Raiders, and now it's a 2-1 count with a man on third being Will Berglund. You don't want to get shut out in your final scheduled game of San Diego. This one's upstairs, ball three. Three balls, one strike. Cole Klein looking to do some damage, get that first run across. That pitch down low and away, a walk for Mercurius, and that was his 96th pitch. He's nearing the century mark. And that's gonna bring up the sophomore, Nate Landever on the pinch hit. He's got runners at the corners with two outs. He's pinch hitting for Colin Richard, who has had no such success at the plate. He struck out twice. Nate Landever here getting his first time in the left-handed batter's box here today. The first pitch on the outside half of the strike zone, it will catch it for strike one. Two outs here with runners at the corners. Shaker down to their last out. Cole Klein in safely on the pickoff attempt over at first. Klein at first, Berglund over at third. He had the triple with two away. That really got things going. Nate Landever tried to check his swing, didn't work. It more than likely would have been a strike. Either way, there's strike two, Shaker once again, down to their last strike. Mercurius with his 99th on its way. And it's right down Broadway, strike three. His 17th strikeout will conclude the game. And your Red Raiders had a rough little go at it here today. Haven't had a run come across since the first game of the tournament. They won that 7-5. to five. They lost yesterday against Morse High School. That was 8 to nothing. They'll lose this one against the Nevada School. 6 to nothing was your final. The start was from Tyler Zach. He pitched good in his first two innings, but after that he wasn't able to throw up a zero on the board. Braden White was able to in the seventh when he closed it out, but Tyler Zach, he only gave up actually two earned runs. The other four really came off of errors, but still, Shaker has one final game to play tomorrow, the last game in which Shaker is out here in California. They will be taking that flight back on Friday, and we will be here covering the game here in Southern California tomorrow. We'll let you know the time whenever we get notified. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Vaughn Ullum here with the call. Shaker loses this one by a score of six to nothing. They will be back in action tomorrow. My name is Vaughn Ullum here with the call. We'll see you tomorrow.